Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at IPVanish VPN, which if you've been on our website before, you know is one of our top ranked VPN providers because they really check all four boxes of the things that you really want when you purchase a VPN subscription. And that is security, privacy, software, and speed. And IPVanish is one of the only providers that really nails all four at a pretty affordable price. And we would say they're priced about in the mid range uh, of most VPN providers. So before we dive deeper into their software, which you see right here, uh, we're gonna just take a quick look at the company and show you what they've got going for them. IPVanish is a true zero log VPN service based in the United States. Zero log means they record no information about your online activity and they don't even keep a record of your server connections or IP addresses you've been assigned by their service. Uh, all their plans come with a seven day money back guarantee. And their pricing ranges from $6.49 a month on a one-year plan to $10 per month if you decide to go month to month. And actually, we have an exclusive offer through IPVanish that if you sign up through our link below, you're going to save an extra 20%. So we're just going to do a brief overview of everything IPVanish has to offer. In terms of speed, they're one of the fastest VPN providers in the world. We've done speed tests over 100 megabits per second even when using the strongest 256-bit encryption that they offer. Uh, the reason they're able to deliver such fast speeds is because their parent company actually owns much of the data infrastructure uh, in the United States that's used to transmit data using fiber optic cables over long distances. So they can flat out offer faster speeds than their competitors. In terms of privacy, IPVanish is a true zero log VPN provider. That means that they don't monitor or record your online activity, and they don't even keep logs of the IP address that you've been assigned when you connect to their servers. This is to protect both themselves and you. In terms of security, they use the industry standard 256-bit AES encryption. And they also use SHA-256 for authentication. That prevents man-in-the-middle attacks or other things where people would try to mess with your traffic. Other VPN providers are still using SHA-1 or SHA-1, which is known to be vulnerable and has actually proven to be insecure within the past year. And finally, in terms of software, they have apps for every major platform, including Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. They're also compatible with Linux, Chromebook, and you can even install IPVanish directly on your uh, VPN capable router. Okay, so this is the IPVanish Windows desktop software. Uh, and right now we're in the main dashboard view. And once you're connected to a VPN server, you'll sort of have your, your connection stats here. Uh, right now it shows your current location and IP address. Uh, this is before you are connected to the VPN. Uh, and here you can sort of set your auto connect settings um, if you wanna uh, just connect to the best city or best server in the United States. Uh, you would just pick a country and click connect. Uh, but we're gonna go through some of the other uh, views here. Okay, so this is the server tab of the IPVanish, uh, IPVanish software. And right now we're in the list view. So you can sort of pick a different couple different things that you can sort countries by. So right now we have uh, them sorted by country and you can scroll down and see the full list of countries. Uh, you can also type the name of a country that you wanna see and it'll quick filter it for you. Everything that matches that either by city or country. So you could type Las Vegas and it'll show that. You could type United and this will show United Kingdom and United States. So it's a quick way to get access to a server location that you want. Uh, the other thing you can do is you see that you can star uh, specific servers. You can uh, add them to your favorites list so that every time you go down here, they're always right at the top. And you can quickly select your most common servers and you just would double click to connect. You've also got the map view where you can uh, geographically select from their server locations. You can zoom in with the scroll wheel and sort of get a more uh, granular view. If you keep zooming in, they'll show you the servers in a specific location or you can hover over. So, um, and it shows a number of servers in that location. So you, know, you can see all over the United States, uh, these are the different server locations you can connect to and then you just click one and hit connect. 
Okay, so we're gonna connect to a server really quick just to show you how easy it is. Um, you can do it from the map view if you want uh, and literally just pick a country from this map, but we're gonna do it from the filter view just because we feel like it. So let's make sure it's open VPN and any country and then we're gonna filter and try France. So it's, uh, I'm gonna click on France, double click and then hit connect and it usually takes about five to 10 seconds to do the VPN handshake uh, and initialize the VPN connection. And all right, that's it. We are connected to France and it'll show you a new IP address up here, uh, which you can verify with a tool like IPlocation.net. So we're gonna hit the refresh button and you can see that it shows the IP address right here, same one as in the software. Uh, and if you scroll down, it shows your IP location is in France. So that makes everything's working properly. And then if you wanna do a little further verification of how well your VPN connection is uh, working, we can go into the settings and you can actually look at the VPN client logs uh, to check and see what type of encryption is being used. So we're gonna go to the open VPN log. Let me pull that down for you and then you're gonna to scroll to the bottom for the most recent connection. And what we see here is uh, it shows you, okay, we're using the Cypher AES 256-bit CBC uh, and you're using the SHA 256-bit uh, HMAC authentication, which is now the industry standard, which uh, IPVanish uses for all open VPN connections. All right, um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, we're gonna take a deeper dive into the settings. Okay, so these are just the general settings that you can choose. Uh, you can tell IPVanish whether you want it to start automatically when Windows starts. Uh, do you want it to connect automatically when you start? So you'd say uh, connect to last connected server or connected fastest server. So every time when Windows starts, it will automatically connect. Um, this is a setting that I recommend everybody change by default. Uh, under the closing settings, if you hit this X button here, uh, it'll automatically close and disconnect the VPN tunnel without warning. Uh, and most other VPN apps will simply just minimize it to the system tray. And I prefer that uh, that activity rather than just quitting because you might not realize that the VPN disconnect disconnected. So I would switch it to either show dialogue and ask just to verify that you in fact want to disconnect, or I prefer the just hide to system tray uh, and you can always manually close IPVanish uh, from the system tray and I'll show you. Uh, you can just right click it and then go exit. Just to make sure you don't accidentally end a VPN session when you don't want to. All right, so we're gonna get back in here. Um, let's see, that's pretty much it for these settings. Uh, in the connection settings, for the VPN protocol, uh, most people are gonna be best off using OpenVPN UDP which is the fastest version of OpenVPN. Uh, this means that it doesn't have to verify every single data packet. So if you lose like one pixel in a 1080p movie you're watching or something, it doesn't have to resend that packet and slow down the connection. Uh, alternatively, you could use TCP. So that's one where every single data packet has to get uh, verified and sent in order. Um, that's really only necessary if you're doing really long file transfers, like if you're trying to download a massive file through your web browser, you might want to switch it to TCP. But the rest of the time, uh, UDP is going to be the fastest. Um, and they have a couple of security measures that you'll find in here. Uh, one is the kill switch. And if you enable this, what this does is uh, if for whatever reason the VPN connection drops, it will instantly kill all internet access to your computer. And the important or the reason that they do that is because if you're doing something that requires a high level of security or you want a high degree of anonymity, you want to make sure that no vulnerable information leaves your computer and goes to the internet unencrypted. And you want to make sure that perhaps that your IP address isn't exposed, for example, uh, if you do file sharing via torrents and things like that. So you can turn the kill switch on. Um, the other two things are IPv6 leak protection and DNS leak protection. And these are basically just two other methods uh, in which your IP address can leak even when the VPN tunnel is active. Uh, we have a guide on this on our website that we'll probably link to in the video notes. Um, but basically all you need to know is that you are best off just keeping them both enabled. Uh, 
And the only reason it would cause you any trouble is if, for example, you had a website that you could only access via IPv6. But right now, since most devices don't even support IPv6, um, that's not going to happen basically anytime in the near future. And then going down here, uh, you can choose the port number 443 or 1194. Um, the reason to choose 443 is if you're trying to get through a network firewall that perhaps blocks uh, VPN traffic, this can help you try to disguise your VPN traffic as SSL traffic, which is um, anytime you visit an HTTPS website. Basically, it's unblockable because if you were to block that kind of traffic, you would be blocking almost all internet access to that computer or on that network. Uh, and then the other thing you can do is select the obfuscate open VPN traffic um, checkbox here. And what that will do is it will try to disguise your VPN traffic as some other type of traffic or basically remove the headers on the data packets that identify it as open VPN traffic. So that should help you get through pesky firewalls, possibly even in really restrictive countries like uh, like the United Arab Emirates or China, for example, or Iran or some other country that really tries to uh, keep their citizens under wraps. Uh, under IP settings here, um, you have the option to periodically rotate your IP address. So you could click this and then you can uh, pick a time interval. Now we don't recommend you do this. There's not really an advantage to rotating your IP address. And every time you do rotate, it will actually disconnect from the VPN. So you would have uh, an insecure interval while it's disconnecting and reconnecting where you might be leaking information unencrypted uh, that you weren't aware of. So most people should probably leave that off. And then uh, in terms of your DNS settings, you can either, either use IP vanishes DNS, um, which we recommend. Uh, DNS servers are every time you type a, a web address into your browser, like www.google.com, that request gets sent to a uh, DNS server that will translate that domain name into an IP address where the, the uh, file is hosted on the internet. Um, if you want to specify your own DNS servers, for example, maybe if you use a smart DNS service or something, or you just don't trust IP Vanish and you want to use a different DNS service, uh, you can specify your own. For example, 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 is Google's DNS service. That's uh, one of the most widely used in the world. So you could set that as your DNS. So one of the most common reasons people choose IP Vanish is because they hear about how fast it is. And the reason IP Vanish is fast is because their parent company actually owns some of the data backbone networks that crisscross the United States. And this is how ISPs actually transfer data between each other to give their customers uh, access to the internet at, at large. And so because they own this data infrastructure, they can offer faster speeds than any of their competitors at a better price. So right now we're on a 50 meg connection. Uh, we're traveling and we're gonna show you how fast uh, we can, we can, uh, or how fast the speeds we can get while connected to IP Vanish. So right now we're connected to uh, Chicago, a Chicago server in the United States, which is about a thousand miles away from us right now. So we're gonna just run the speed test here. And it's creeping up here. So as you can see, we're basically maxing out our 50 meg connection. Uh, even while connected with the VPN. So now to the real question. Is IP Vanish the best VPN service for your needs? And is that the company you should choose? Let's look at the weaknesses first. Now, here's a couple nitpicky ones. First of all, there's no adjustable encryption inside the software. So you're stuck with whatever the default encryption strength that the server you choose uses. Usually that's gonna be 256-bit AES encryption, which is extremely strong, but sometimes it's not quite as fast as 128-bit encryption. So if you're doing a low security thing like streaming video or something, but you still want the VPN connectivity, the speeds might be a bit slower if you have a slow connection. But we hear from uh, the support team that that feature is coming soon. Now, another negative of IP Vanish is like most VPNs, they are blocked by Netflix. There's only about three or four VPNs in the world that are currently compatible with Netflix. You can simply disconnect from the VPN tunnel anytime you want to use Netflix. Uh, and that's what most people will do. But if you absolutely must have VPN con connectivity that works with Netflix, we recommend you try NordVPN instead. Uh, and you can check out a review on that.
And then the third weakness is that it's a bit more expensive than other VPNs. And you'll find this is true of all the faster VPNs because the number one expense for a VPN service is uh, server cost and bandwidth costs. And so, you know, the, the faster your speeds, that means you have fewer users per server, which means the cost per user is going to be a bit higher to cover the expense of running the service. Uh, so these are just some nitpicky weaknesses in terms of strength. If you want the fastest VPN provider, period, go with IPVanish. For the rest of you, it's probably going to come down to your intended VPN usage. If you're just an all around sort of privacy conscious guy and you like the fact that there's zero log, but you don't really do anything that you don't need that much bandwidth or that much speed, maybe you could just uh, be fine with private internet access, which is about half the price, but is a bit slower of a VPN and it doesn't have quite the polished apps that IPVanish does. Uh, so maybe you could save some money there. However, if you are uh, want to do high bandwidth activities like video streaming, or uh, torrenting, or you use Kodi, and especially uh, Kodi add-ons where you're actually be streaming live, uh, and you want the highest possible resolution, IPVanish is literally the best fit you're gonna find. Okay, so if you're ready to give IPVanish a try, uh, we recommend you take advantage of their seven-day refund policy, and which lets you try IPVanish basically risk-free because you, you can ask for a full refund within the first week. Uh, and you can save 20% off your first full billing cycle up to one year by using our link, which is vpnu.cc slash IPVanish. Uh, and if you use that, you'll be taken right to their uh, sales page and you will see that they've already applied the 20% discount off what is uh, normally a $649 annual plan or usually a $10 a month uh, month to month plan. And in order to sign up, all you need is two pieces of information. You need a valid email address and you need a form of payment. Uh, make sure you do use a real email address for two reasons. Number one, this is your login for the software. And B, this is how they send you uh, your activation link as well as your temporary password to sign into the software. So just enter a valid email address here, select a method of payment, uh, like PayPal or credit card is really easy. Or if you're a bit more privacy conscious and you have some Bitcoins laying around, you can pay with Bitcoin through BitPay. Then just submit the payment form and they'll basically immediately send you an activation email and you'll be into your account in less than five minutes and uh, online with a VPN connection. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up this uh, review of IPVanish, but you can check out our other video or, or text reviews on the uh, YouTube at our channel, VPN University, or on our website, which is vpnuniversity.com. We've also got all kinds of tutorials showing you how to do things like set up your VPN on your router, uh, install it on a fire stick and all kinds of other cool stuff. So make sure you check those out as well and have a great day. Thanks a lot.